Hello Spirit, so recently the new Sea Beast movie was released. I knew perfectly of this movie from the trailers, as well as others, and already love the look and feel of it. And so I thought, hey, why not review this without further ado? The Sea Beast focuses on a veteran hero and a kid that wants to be a hunter. However, she has a different outlook on the battles that's taken place for generations after facing the Red Bluster. And they both learn that maybe the creatures didn't start the war, all with the help of the sea creature they call Red. Now, usually in movies, shows, well, basically any media, Kid characters are written in either three ways, or all of them. And sometimes they're hated for being realistic, but they're either more confident than they should be for their age, too obnoxious or annoying, or they succumb to their childish urges. But for Macy, they do all three. Now, Macy is confident at the start and annoying to the characters in the movie. She looks up to her hero who fought around the same age and came down from a line of hunters. But she risks that chance in order to save the rest of the crew. And after almost dying, some time passes and then she leads into her childish urges such as wanting a pet. As kid characters come, she's definitely one of the better written ones. Next up is the second main character, Jacob, aka her hero. He's a hunter that's ready to become the captain of his father figure's ship. However, as he's stuck with Macy, he starts to learn that what Macy says about their history being wrong might be true, and quits monster hunting after he learns that. Speaking of father figures, he's the antagonist throughout the film, Captain Crow. But unlike the true antagonistic villains, he's actually more likable of a character. Well, he um he is in the first half of the movie because he uh kind of threatens to kill a kid. That bring her to me! She's just a child! I'm giving you an order! Please, Captain! Bring her to me! <coughs> Let's just um move on from that. But his basic motivations to do that is to keep the hunters active. As he struck a deal with the devil. As he struck a deal of royalty. Who hopes to remove them, despite those they've saved and lost. Finally, there's the other minor characters who are, well, in the story but don't play big parts or aren't in the movie a lot. Sarah Sharp, Crow's first mate and is known to have a lot of weapons. The Queen and King are villains who have known monsters didn't start the war. Admiral Hornigold is a hotshot for a hunter who thinks he can replace hunters. Gwen Batterby, who is a merfolk sorceress known for taking everything if you strike a deal with her. And finally, Blue, Maisie's monster pet. <laughs> Now, the movie on its own did great with its pacing to get the important factors, but there obviously were a few factors that weren't given that time. One is the British Navy. When they're on the island, they're just randomly there. There was no scene that highlighted that the King or Queen had sent them to that island to stock up, so I feel like a few scenes were cut. Speaking of, the King and Queen turned out to be generational villains. Now, I don't really mind that they don't have a lot of screen time. You learn over time that the monsters most of the time are good, and mix how rude the king and queen were, you get that they, uh, sorry, their ancestors started it. Last on this list is Gwen Batterby. She gets one scene, a scene prior talking about her, and an after scene of those disliking Crow for the deal. She's well established as a character who goes against the hunter's code, yada yada yada, hide to be an omen kind of character. And yet due to Red living, the deal is basically called off, or at least that's what I'm assuming. She should have had a lot more of a part to play, and yes, the poison was a big part to play, but if you removed her from the film entirely, it wouldn't have impacted the story a whole lot. Now, there's a small twist in the movie. This is a twist. Monster is actually good, only attacking in self-defense. In other words, the good all along trope. Now, kids, can you tell me what this feels familiar? That's right! How to Train Your Dragon. Now, before you say it's not like this trope hasn't been used before in other movies, it's also how Red looks that bothers me. Going into it, I wasn't expecting the twist, but as soon as I saw the design, then the fact that they weren't dead basically just clicked. 
And it's, it, this isn't just me that thinks she looks like Toothless. Now, this isn't essentially a bad thing. No movie is perfect and it will have its flaws. This can be unnecessarily turned for the franchise. A simple plot with bad twist villains. This is a kids movie. So yeah, I, I, I don't expect the twist to be mind blowing, but I thought it was worth mentioning. All right, this ends this segment. Let's do the I uh, should have probably talked about this earlier, huh? I would have made a really shit bad animation joke, but you've clearly seen the clips I'm playing at the moment. But to start off, I love the fucking feel of this movie. While, yes, this film isn't perfect, I'm just happy it wasn't purged. I'm not sure if animation movies were purged, and I'm not sure if this joke makes sense. Now, the feel of this movie, if you will, directly reminds me of Sea of Thieves. Down to its character designs, the supernatural elements into the story, the closest to the pirate era. It makes me wish Rare would make an animated show, but to move this along, the movie grants you amazing animation, beautiful, vibrant backgrounds and designs, and has amazing water animations. I also freaking love the designs for the monsters, characters, everything. I know a couple minutes ago, Red's design bothered me, but that was just for the twist. I still love the character design for Red, specifically the color palette. This movie is definitely worth a watch, and hey, you might even get some nostalgia how to turn your dragon feelings when watching it. The animation is brilliant, the characters are likeable, and while the pacing could use some work, it won't take you away from the main idea of the film. 8 out of 10.